Bullnet Patch 5 is here, and it's generally a good update, but has some very low lows. In this video, I'm going to be going over everything good and bad and giving my full review of it. But let's start off with some of the positives before we dig deep into what's wrong with this patch. First and foremost, the absolutely ass IK from patch 4 has been fixed. Punching enemies and doing any form of melee feels pretty similar to how it was in patch 3 and generally makes the game a whole lot better for someone like me who prefers to melee everything. But it still doesn't feel as good as it did in patch 3. I felt like sometimes when I'd throw a punch, more specifically a right hook, the game wouldn't register it and it killed the fun of punching enemies a lot. I had this same problem in patch 4, and with the IK being tweaked this update to be more similar to patch 3, I was expecting the punch in to be given the same treatment by byproduct of that, but it unfortunately hasn't been the case. Again, I want to make it clear that it's absolutely an improvement over patch 4, but clearly still needs some tweaking before it can return to its former glory. One last note about the IK, twisting the wrist is basically as good as it was in patch 3, which makes spawning null bodies that face directly at you with the utility gun possible once again. Next positive, most of the mods made in patch 4 are still working. Even the mods that don't work 100% still tend to work around 75%, with the exceptions of things that require grips such as guns, but we'll get back to that later when we talk about the negatives. One example is I tried playing through all of Aquadex Sector using the version made for Patch 4. The only thing that really ruined the map was the fact that I couldn't grab a key needed to proceed with the level, thus requiring me to noclip onwards. That's pretty impressive and I feel shows greatly how much is still working. I also tried this Bonewalker arcade machine that doesn't require any grabbing and it worked exactly the same as it did in Patch 4. Although, not adding at least one major thing to the SDK this update feels a little bit like wasted potential, but again, we'll come back to that in the negatives. Now onto a sort of positive, Mindhive got a gigantic secret area under the map and seems to be only accessible via no clipping. It looks like SLZ is cooking up something absolutely crazy here, but as of right now, this entire area is very pointless and extremely unfinished. I have no choice but to believe they left this mind dive stuff in by mistake as it's extremely glitchy, requiring weird no clipping to get access to, along with rooms with no entrance altogether and just gaps in the world everywhere. There's also no functionality outside of visuals here, so while this is cool to see, I think we'd have been better off if this area was just added to the game when it was ready instead of right now. Again, it seems like it was left here on accident, so I'm not going to be reviewing it today as I don't think we're supposed to even have it yet. It doesn't affect standard playthroughs in any way whatsoever, so it's neither a positive nor a negative in that regard. Final note about this, there's also the potential that this is an intentional thing and is broken for lore reasons, but if that's the case, it being so buggy is flat out annoying. Oh, cool. it broke my grip. Oh, and I can't drop this, my Nimbus gun. Oh, it's fucked up. Fuck, <laughs> fucking, fucking! One really great thing is the Quest 3 version of the game got even more visual enhancements over the Quest 2 version. While most of the real Quest 3 improvements happen in Patch 4, Patch 5 introduces some transparency effects, which are decently cool, but also make it so when no clipping, the image outside the map is in a hodgepodge of the last image you've seen. I don't have footage of this, but if you've no clipped on Quest, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Now onto the big change of Patch 5, the SDK tools. This time around, we got impact properties and zone aggro. Starting with impact properties, now in game, shooting things will leave corresponding bullet holes and have corresponding effects depending on what you shoot. There's a new test chamber that does an excellent job at showing all of this off and is leagues better than the last test chamber we got. Overall, the addition of impact properties is... Okay, it's not really that cool or special and definitely isn't as big of a feature as zones were in the last update, but it's still useful. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have even noticed the impact property change if all the update teasers didn't mention it though. Next though, the big one, zone aggro. For those who don't know what this is, it gives modders the ability to officially implement NPCs noticing you when you either walk into a room they're in or have them hear you when you shoot a bullet into the air. Previously, this was possible via extended SDK, but now that it's officially a part of the SDK, it should hopefully no longer break when Bone Lab updates. 
absolutely awesome addition that should make updates break even less mods than they did this time. One final SDK tool we got was Spawn Force. It's not that major in any way, but it basically lets modders set a force to things that spawn in, so zombies can shoot out of this tube when they get spawned in, for example. Now, we finally move on to the negatives. Like I brought up earlier, any mod made in patch 4 that requires grabbing something is broken. Most of patch 4's mods do work on patch 5, which is also thanks to the previous SDK update making a lot more things SDK compliant, but there are still a couple of key extended SDK components from last patch that modders will now need to re-implement in order to get their mods to work on patch 5, such as vehicles, and most importantly to me, grips. I'm really mixed about this update, mainly because of the lack of a really substantial SDK update this time around. We got zone aggro, which is a wonderful addition and all, but just knowing that it's more than likely that every object made grabbable in this update will no longer be grabbable again once patch 6 comes out is a little disheartening. Same goes with every vehicle and every gun. I wish they'd just keep these working from extended SDK implementation until they're ready to add it to the base SDK officially. That way these things would only break the one time when it's time to support it correctly with documentation and any other benefit they make for us, as opposed to it just breaking every single time Bone Lab updates until we eventually either get official support for each thing specifically or the game stops getting updates altogether. I was hoping we'd see something major added to the SDK this time around, and you could argue zone aggro is that, but still I really wish we got something bigger for our first update after patch 4. It didn't have to be grips, but something very common like vehicles or guns. Still, crossing my fingers that patch 6 gives us something cool like that, and crossing my fucking toes that we finally get official implementation of grips. Moving on to in-game changes though, they absolutely fucked up the fisheye cam. There's this weird giant blinding light of god that occurs almost everywhere out of bounds when you have spectator cam enabled. This doesn't show up in headset, but for recording videos or streaming Bone Lab to my friends over Discord, it's generally better to just turn on the Steam VR view instead, but I'd prefer to use the spectator cam as it easily looked the best out of any option available, and now it's unfortunately one of the worst options to use, especially when no clipping around, as the big light of god seems to mainly show up when outside of the map. What the it's fuck am I looking at? It's the bloom effect, the they stacked expansion. it. They, yeah, they fucked that <laughs> the up. Main Overall, while this update is an improvement to patch 4, I was personally hoping for a bit more in terms of SDK tools. While the in-game stuff like the IK being better and the impact properties is about what I expected, I was still hoping the SDK would get some kind of bigger feature than just zone aggro, but I guess we'll have to wait for patch 6 to see if we'll get anything really swagtastic. Please add grips, Brandon, I'm begging you, or put the caution tape over it, just do something. I basically never ask you guys to subscribe, but I figured I'd try it today, so hey, if you want to support me in my future videos for free, subscribing is the best thing you could do, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out my first impressions of the patch and my last one. The initial impressions were definitely a lot more positive, and there's a more in-depth look at all the new mind dive stuff towards the end. Thank you so much for watching this video and letting me get ad revenue off of you. With all of that out of the way, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye bye